Hi, on the woodpecker today, Renee and I spent 10 days at the cottage. I haven't touched a lot of wood except for the small support. But the weather was great and it was really relaxing. I don't feel like we're on vacation until the pavement ends and we're on the dirt road. Now we're officially on vacation. But as usual, this time of year, there are a lot of trucks hauling timber out of the forest. This means the road is well sanded. When we leave the road that the trucks use, there's no more sand on the road which is a good thing because those darn trucks threw gravel at me and now I have two chips in my windshield. After five hours, we're in the parking lot of the Outfitter where we leave our pickup. It's now time to get the snowmobile on the ground and pack everything to go to the cottage. This includes Renee's blind rat. Since we love trouble, well, two months ago, René adopted another rat, so we have to carry him the best way we can. Lucky for me that she didn't fall in love with a Labrador to guide her blind rat. And off we go. Five kilometers later, we arrive at the road we brush cut last fall. I'm happy to see that at least one neighbor has traveled on it because there's a snowmobile track. We can go up to our gate without any problem. But we have to put snowshoes on from here to get to the cottage. Ah, it's not far away, about 500 feet. But this makes me thirsty anyway. But the drinking water is completely frozen. To tie it, I named to liquefy snow. While the snow is on the stove, I start the propane blower. Nothing can eat the place as fast. We also start a fire. Ah, it's not that bad, only minus 4 Celsius inside and just at the freezing point outside. It's the reason why René stayed out to quickly shovel a path to the hot house. <laughs> We're not expecting any help from those two useless balls of fur. When the snow turns to sludge, it's time to put a bottle to top. But I'm not done because I want to bring my snowmobile here. So it's time to compact more snow. All done. This means that now I can bring the snowmobile into the parking area without any surprises. When everything is inside the cottage, we can finally rest a bit. We need to rest because we were up well before 4 a.m. But it's only the next morning that I realize that our solar panels were a bit obstructed by some snow. The battery didn't receive a lot of charge on that day. I have a really nice slope on my panels, unlike some floating solar panel farms in France. This really shows how warm it is over there and there's no snow accumulation. I can say that there's a lot of snow around here this year either. During a normal winter, the snow on the totem would be about this high. If you think I'm exaggerating, Look at this picture from a past winter. It was marvelous. But the boardwalks were not totally cleared the day before. While René takes care of that, I shovel a path to the woodshed. Now we will be able to easily get to the firewood. But there's still more snow to shovel. This time it's to get to the watershed.
With the snow removed, I can fill two buckets of water. I bring them inside and fill the small barrel we keep in the cottage during winter. Now we have water to clean the dishes. When all the chores are done, I can finally jump on my snowmobile. The trails are incredible. With this light snow falling, it's just heaven. But it's not always that nice, as you can see here. I recorded when I crossed the stream, but that's when my small camera quit on me. I take advantage of the fact that my snowmobile compacted the snow to take walks. Generally, I'm alone, but I brought René's new rat a couple of times. It had been a long time since I had a friend with me during my walks. But when we want to take a walk on the lake, it's another story. With its 18 inches of fluffy snow, we have to slip on our snowshoes. As you can see, I'm plowing a path, so it's easier for René to follow me. We're not the only ones who like to go on the lake. I'm not 100% sure, but someone told me that those tracks came from two others. Uh, it's the first time we see these footprints in winter. But those ones are way bigger than the last ones. But mm, not as big as the trail that one neighbor made on the lake. By staying on his trail, the snow hardens, so he's sure not to get stuck on six inches of sludge. I was pretty happy even though there are lots of icicles hanging from the roof. Ah, that's because my ceiling is not well insulated. With our new soffits, no water managed to touch the wall. The holes allowed the water to drip before it touched the wall, unlike last year. We had to eat the cottage a lot. Just look at those temperatures that I took some mornings. It was warmer at the end of our stay. But with all those cold nights, we had to burn a lot of wood. This means that every third day, we had to make a firewood refill. Each time we filled up the racks and also all our banana boxes. Some days, I programmed some microcontrollers with the Raspberry Pi I keep there. I was not too worried about power. Just have a look here. I'm charging the batteries at 15 amperes. But even if the sun gives us infinite power, we finish the propane tank that we use for the fridge and stove. So I put the empty tank in the sled and en route to the pickup. I put it inside the pickup bed and went back to the cottage. That's when I saw the massacre done by a snowmobile that caught fire on the trail. No, no firefighters came. The only option is to watch it burn. Don't worry, it wasn't mine. <laughs> but still, a door handle broke in our end, and like I said before, my small action camera died on me. To continue filming during my snowmobile rides, I will make a stand with this piece of birch. Uh, the end is a bit crooked. I need to fix this. I want the other end to be a bit pointy. Bravo! 
But when I try to refine the axe cut, I figure out that I need another approach. Okay, it's far from being a work of art, but it will do. But I'm still missing a hole for the boat. All that's left to do is to glue the bolt inside the hole. Lucky for me, the only type of glue I leave at the cottage is epoxy. Exactly the one I need. Job done. The camera screws on top and the pointy end is easy to stick into the soft snow. Now the only natural thing to do is to try it. The trail was exquisite. No wonder, because the groomer passed every second day. I caught up to it, near the dam, close to the cottage. It was easy to film it. I often stop here for the view. But just after the dam, I take an on-surface trail. Uh, it's not as smooth. 20 kilometers later, I arrive at another dam. This one is not as pretty, but it brings back fond memories. We used to camp right here before we built the cottage. From there, I continue and arrive at a major dirt road. Traveling on a dirt road like that on a snowmobile is asking for trouble. That's the reason why I flip my wheels on. This way I won't damage my skis. I can go very fast, but I'm not damaging anything. All this to go to the Etskamek village store to buy two bags of potato chips. Anything to do a four hour outing. But unfortunately, after 10 days, it's time to go back home. We will have to come back in March because I haven't shoveled the roof. Ah, it's hard to leave such a peaceful place. The only noise was the squirrels and a few birds. But coming back also means packing everything Rene wants to bring back home. I go toward the pickup. This was our stay at the cottage at the beginning of February. I hope I didn't bore you too much and see you soon for another episode of The Woodpecker. Mm -hmm.